All right, so hello, good morning. It's Saturday. Howdy. Hope everyone's doing well. A little nervous today, um, but I think we're ready to go. So we'll get right into it. Have the desktop audio muted so you can't hear what's going on in the background. House off the greater good. Who made you judge and jury? Shuffling array, alright. So I kind of already know what this question is going to be. This is almost certainly going to be, uh, it's called Yates. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Yates. Hold on. Yates Shuffle. I can't remember what it's called. Oh boy. That's, that's not spelled right either. To be Fisher Yates, not H. Yeah. Almost certainly going to be a Fisher Yates shuffle that we're looking at here. I'll explain how this works. Or, well, it's. Yeah. We'll look into it shortly. Excuse me, review it. Almost certainly this is an implementation of the Yates, Fisher Yates algorithm. Given an integer array nums, design an algorithm to randomly shuffle the array, input the solution class. Initialize the object the integer array nums, resets the array to its original configuration, returns it, returns a random shuffling of the array. Interesting. Okay. Waking the I'm the whistleblower waking in the wind watching waiting in the I think you get a copy constructor if you do it this way. I think it's, I think it's a co copy assignment. Story, I'm the whole says. I'm the whistleblower. Wake up and look at it. Again, copy constructor, a copy assignment. And then we'll do Fisher Yates implementation here for the shuffle. Are you a string viewer? My string viewer. Uh, hold on, let me. So maybe I shouldn't have the music going. I don't know. I'm thinking like, when when you when I'm speaking to you, I'm like, hey, I should. Um, what's up, Yuki? Welcome back. I'm like, hey, I should. Uh, um, mute the music so I can focus on what he, what you're saying. But actually, then I should really be muting the music so I can focus on what I'm doing. String view is what I meant. Are you a string viewer? A string view is what I meant. What's the question? <laughs> I, I don't use string view, actually. Um, yeah, string view is interesting. It's, uh, oh, I have something for docs, too. The duct tape of string types. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's not a very flattering. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, <laughs> I I don't use Stream View at all. Um, personally, I don't really ever see the the need for it. Typically, or at least maybe it's just me. But um, it's uh. Where is string view actually? It should be around here somewhere. Hold on. I know what it is. It's basically yeah, there we go. String view. Oh yeah. So can refer to a constant contiguous sequence of character like objects with the first element of the sequence at position zero. Holds any two only two members, a pointer to const character and a size. String view, yeah, this is the one usually you want. And I don't know too much about it though. Like I know it exists. I think the I don't really totally understand it. Like the motivation and the use case and all that. I think it's the idea is that you're you don't like instead of copying strings over and over again, 
you can use a string view and that'll kind of like basically give you like a reference point into a string right because strings for the most part are, are implemented in a way that's like they're not they're immutable they're not mutable meaning like every time you want to mess around with strings you need to create a new string um, more more or less however like there are a lot of ways to avoid copying strings if that's your your intention so that's kind of why I don't tend not to use string view but it is an interesting um, bad now holds a dangling pointer okay good points to a static array does not outlive the pointed to character array. Yeah, like it's basically like pointers to a, a, a character array, which is not quite like you don't necessarily need to use a whole class to do that. I guess something like that. I don't know. I tend not to use string view very much. Um, whoa, whoa, look at this. Whoa, that's an optical illusion for you. Whoa. What's going on there? <laughs> What's happening? That's fun. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why this? What is this? Why? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> what am I looking at? Why would you do this? <laughs> Who did this? <laughs> Who did this? Why did they do that? What? Excuse me. I'm just... I don't know. Yeah, it's mostly foreign to me. I'll just say string view. I don't use it too much. But that's interesting you brought it up. Yeah. What, here, okay, here's an example of it being used, right? In theory. String view, Unicode, this thing. Oh, each of these are a single character. Oh, these are really funky. Look at these characters, man. Okay. And then this is for int y p this is also kind of weird notation i don't know what's going on there so hearing some noises i don't know what that is um y is not equal to six increment y i don't know what what's going on why are these what are these braces doing there i don't know what that is um y p equals p plus one mod four okay interesting for int x, I don't know what these init. Why do they have braces here? Why are they doing that? That's that's kind of weird to me too. I've never seen that before. I've not, not have not seen that before. Not equal to 16. Increment x. Standard out Unicode. New line. Unicode of p. Okay, I think I think I get it. So this is basically a character array. This is like a character array. This is the string view is it's pointed to this character array. It's not the actual character array. Really the 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 these are that's so confusing. It, you know this actually seems to be this is actually a excuse me. This is an array of string views. And this is, yeah, so, I mean, okay, I guess. I don't know. This doesn't really seem to exemplify the usage of string view very well. This seems like it's just, <laughs> like, this easily could have just been, like, a string. <laughs> this could have just not been a string view. It would have been the same thing. Anyway, okay, all right. Let me get back to what we're doing. Um, I don't like string. SSO can uh, heck off. Can frick off. Can I'm trying to. I'm trying not to curse. I, I actually. I'm not. I'm not. I, I've been learning about. Um, excuse me. I'm gonna like diverging even further from the conversation, but um, or diverging it again. But uh, uh, I've been trying to avoid even. Like even words that you would replace curses with, because it's a little it's a little bit confusing and kind of maybe maybe excessive. But like the idea is that like to not have a contentious spirit, um, 
I use it on purpose because I know you don't like cursing. Yeah, I pre yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I'm, I'm, tr I'm also trying not to, um, also trying not to be like rude to you because I noticed that. Yeah, I, I, I imagine you probably would have just used a curse word if you weren't speaking with me. So thank you for that because that's probably, probably a kindness you're showing towards me, which I don't, I don't mean to disrespect that. Um, thank you for that. Uh, what, I, what I mean is, um, um. Or not acknowledge that, like, yeah, like it's like it's like it's like, like to totally unrelated thing, but like, related, but other, another tangential thing is like one of the worst things you could do to somebody is like when they try to when they they try to do something like they sacrifice something for you, and then you don't acknowledge it or respect it, <laughs> or it's like someone tries to do something difficult, di something for you, and you basically don't. Um, like acknowledge that that they did that they sacrificed something for you like that's like a horrible thing because it leaves the person feeling like you know kind of yeah dejected um it's okay i'll avoid them no 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 it's fine no no i'm sorry no i'm just i'm i'm as i'm reading it i'm i'm having like a mental like i'm wrestling in my own mind here i'll just read what you said i'm sorry <laughs> forgive me <laughs> forgive me um, that's so good for golf. I have a phobia for heat allocations. I can't help it. What is, what is SSO? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, no, I, I don't know. Um, so many things I don't know. SSO, uh, I have a phobia for heat allocations. I can't help it. Yeah, that's, that's a good, no, that's fair though. Yeah, I do the same thing. I don't like heat allocations too. Same deal. Well, the reason, yeah, the reason I have a phobia of heat allocations is, um, is because of what's it called? Uh, um, punches holes in the memory, right? I think we talked about that a while back. Yeah, if you like, if you're a game developer and you have like you know efficiency and, and performance is like super important, and the game runs for a long period of time, which typically games, video games, you might play for like hours on end. Um, then punching holes in the memory is important. Is a big deal. So like, yeah, if you do sort of regular heap allocations um, after a while, you start to end up in situations where the memory, um, like, it's not as efficient. It it yeah, it starts having efficiency problems where like, basically like you started with a, a long continuous open sort of memory slot where it's like you know you can put your memory wherever you want in there, and that as you add things to it. And then you remove things that basically there's like holes. And so like when, when the, when your program has to find a spot where it wants to, basically has to find a spot where it's like, okay, this chunk of memory is available. It starts to slow down because there's just like there are holes all over the place and like you can't just easily find the next position. That's kind of how it's explained to me. I don't, I don't know if that's, I don't even know if that's true. <laughs> Quite frankly, I don't even know if that's true. I think that's how, I think that's, that sounds plausible to me, but I've never like, verified that other than like that seems to be i just i like to repeat it because it makes me sound smart <laughs> but the truth is like i don't actually know if that's even exactly why um but i think that's the idea so i, I also do avoid heap allocations it's true um uh but i'm not sure what sso means string view is just a const character pointer and account right that's what yeah that's what the the, the reference just said, I think, sick example. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a cool picture. Like, it's a cool picture, but the the, the example is like, I... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, why uh, with initializer list... Uh, uh, um, no, no. Why of empty braces just sets to zero thing? Oh! Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I thought it would be zero anyway. Well, I guess I guess if you want to like more explicitly set it to zero, because you could just declare it and then int int defaults to zero. I think when they're um, excuse me when they're what's the word uh, is it declared or declare? I want to say declared declared. Frick isn't a cuss word, is it? Oh yeah, yeah, no. So I don't think so. But it's it's used as a placeholder for a curse word, isn't it? Right? And like that that was the thing that I was kind of struggling with is that like I shouldn't use curse words, um, 
and I was trying to figure out why I shouldn't use curse words. Because I've thought about that a lot. Like, I, I used to have an idea of, like, well, swearing is forbidden in the Bible. It's actually, no, it's not swearing is forbidden in the Bible. It's a, uh, it's a misunderstanding of the passage. The pa- it's kind of a, a, the, the passage, that particular passage that I was, I was using um, was from the book of James. And it was referring to oaths. And you know, the idea is, like, well, you can't, you don't even have control over um, whether or not your hair is going to go gray or not. So why do you think you have control over the future, right? And I think the idea was like bearing that in mind, don't make promises that you can't keep, basically. Um, and so try, so try not to, so don't, 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 you know, yeah, so just basically be careful not to, uh, um, yeah, either make a promise you can't keep, or um, the other thing, which was. Say you're say say you're gonna do something that you may or may not be able to do, or or say you're not gonna do something that you probably will do. If that makes sense, like but, yeah, basically make, not bring, being promised you can't keep, um, having integrity, which is like not really the same thing as not cursing, <laughs> right? Like having integrity and not cursing are not the same things, um, and both of those things I struggle with. By the way, don't get me don't misunderstand me. Um, I'm constantly struggling with like, okay, how do I <laughs> How do I, like, yeah, the integrity part, it's, I'll just say it's challenging. I, don't, I won't go into too much detail about that, but I'll just say that that's something I struggle with. But the cursing, for me, lately, I mean, also, I'm still, like, diverging pretty far from the conversation. Let me, let me come back for a second. I'll come back to why I'm trying not to curse and, like, what I what I think from Scripture, like, justifies not cursing. I'll, I'll get into that. Um, uh, you're too kind and genuine not using them. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's, that's very sweet. That's very sweet. Um, it's up to you. You do whatever you want to do. I, I, should, well, I shouldn't say do whatever you want to do. I shouldn't encourage you to do whatever you want, want to do. I should say, ultimately, you know, you, you do what you, you do what you think. I would say I would say I shouldn't say that either. <laughs> I would say praise God. <laughs> praise God, He gave you free will, and let me not let me not. Um, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, Because I should be trying to persuade you to, to do things that are righteous, so <laughs> so I don't I don't want to say that either. I don't want to say let me not dissuade you, but um, small strain optimization. So I'm just I'm just I'm just gonna move away from whatever I was just talking about, whatever that was I was saying. I'm just gonna just make a make it un a, a, a what do they call that a a non sequitur or a non not a very smooth transition to another subject <laughs> um it's supposed to allocate like allocate the strain on the heap if it's above 15 characters or something at least on visual studio 20 i think i think oh small string optimization is that what it is supposed to allocate the string on the heap if it's above 15 characters uh oh interesting Huh. Aren't like int value uninitialized? Isn't? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think int has a uh, int initialization. I don't think so. Because here, let's see. Uh, uh I want to say in the int. Because I, I kind of I wanted to learn about it a while back. Um, forgot where I found it, the reference to that. But yeah, uh, basically, well, we could do it this way. We could do it this way. How about this? I can test it now. I wonder if you could do. Now I think I'd be curious. Um, int. I wonder what this does. Yeah. Compiled? Hey, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, see that? <laughs> see that? And you can actually generate a temporary int. That's so weird, but yeah, you can do that. You can create a temporary int object. 
I guess, sort of. And that did basically the default constructor sets it to X. Something if you think of ints as objects, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I think the default is just zero. Yeah. And I think it's actually the constructor default to zero. Something like that. Some, something like that. It's like not totally correct. It's just sort of like how they're initialized. It's not. I don't know if it's an object necessarily, but I, I guess you could think of it that way. But yeah, that's my my understanding. Um, let's see. Um, in VS Debugger, it's like a bunch of random values. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that happens. Yeah, you're right about that. It does happen. Um, you do get that sometimes with your. Maybe it's compiler compiler specific. I could be wrong about that. It could be compiler. Spe I think you're right because I, I think I remember that in MSVC it was. I did have issues where if I didn't set my values to a certain. So maybe you're right about that. Yeah, it makes sense. They use the. I'll have to remember to do that in the future instead of just declaring variables without a, um, oh man, because I, I, I do that naturally anyway, like I'm, a, I'm just like aware, sorry, I get, I'm thinking about this, I want to say, yes, I think that's compiler specific, and I have been in the habit for a long time because of that, because I did run into similar errors, where I would always give a value, always declare just some value, even if that wasn't like you know, like to something, so that way it was not arbitrary. Um, and I've run into issues in the past where classes that I would declare, because they have member variables, sometimes in the context it's awkward to give them a default value. I want to say if it's a static member of the class, something like that, giving it a default value is kind of awkward. Um, so I had to look into that, and I had situations where the default value was like garbage, and it was basically you know, it was, was not something that I could use and I assumed it was zero incorrectly and then I, my program ran into issues. I want to say it was when I was trying to do, I was trying to have a counter, like a global counter, like if you were going to have like, you know, count how many times this function was called and like each time you call it print the number of times it was called, something like that. And you'd have like a static, you have like a static variable. Well, it was something like that, but it was like count you know, how many times the number of instances of this class or some, something like that, where I wanted to have a static variable for for the a mem as a member of the class. So it was a class static variable. And then initializing that with a, with a value, a default value, or just initializing it to zero, I had assumed it was automatically zero, but in MSVC, I think it's not automatically zero. I had some situation like that, something really weird, something like kind of unusual, where like I couldn't set the default value, and I ran into that problem where it had had garbage in it, and my program wasn't working, and I was very confused. <laughs> I was like, "What is going on here?" Um, yeah, I've had, I've had situations like that too in the past, where like I just didn't didn't initialize a value value msvc boo <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it's okay i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't fault the compiler for that i mean that's such a minor thing um but uh but i don't like msvc because um i kind of just question microsoft in general that's really that's really the only reason like other than that i don't really care i mean it's not i don't really i don't really like fault technology too much i really i really question other people's motives that's more so an intent that's more so what i question um like if technology is not very good it's like okay maybe i won't use it because it's just like it's not that great but like i won't be like i'm definitely not going to use it because like if they make an improvement to it then it's like oh okay it's pretty good now i'll use it like uh, you know i'm not like what what bothers me though is like the people involved with certain companies and and not even the people themselves but like just the things that they tend to do right because as a christian it's like well you don't even necessarily know who's saved and not saved right like people who seem like they're evil one day could become christians later like you don't necessarily know that um that's up to god so like you're supposed to love everybody right like that's love your enemies like that's part of part of the thing um you don't know who's saved you don't know you don't even know if the person that you think is a righteous person is actually very evil, right? I mean, there was a thing, um, 
I think it's public, so I could talk about it. But there was a thing with uh, Ravi Zacharias, where apparently he was doing a lot of evil things, um, and I considered him to be kind of like a hero. Um, he was quite, quite, uh, in my opinion, like an impressive person as, as a you know, sort of in his faith as a Christian. Um, and it's like, well, you know, so like these are things that only God knows. It's like, is this person really evil or is this person really righteous? Like, I don't, you know, I have no way of knowing. Like, I can't know know their heart. Bible makes it pretty clear the heart is just incredibly evil. Um, so it's like, well, basically I just assume everybody's evil. <laughs> In which case, it's like, well, I guess then and then I have to kind of play this game of like, well, if they're probably going to do evil with you know whatever time, attention, resources, whatever I give them, then I probably should kind of pull back on that, right? Um, if it's really obvious they're going to do evil, then I definitely shouldn't support it. Um, so that's kind of my take so yeah I, I realize it's like really long-winded but like i don't really have an issue with like microsoft's technology as much as i do i mean there are things that are annoying about microsoft's technology but that's with all technology it's more so issues i have with just i don't really trust bill gates <laughs> that's kind of like to put it really bluntly like i kind of don't trust him um and uh i would cite you know like the internet explorer way back when he got trust busted, his company got trust busted because they were trying to force everyone. So like I'm here on Firefox, they were trying to force everybody to use Internet Explorer. Like you couldn't use a different browser. I think most people now use Google Chrome. You wouldn't be able to use Google Chrome if Bill, Bill Gates didn't get trust busted. Um, you, he, he actually had, there was there were lawsuits filed against him for trying to force everyone to use Internet Explorer. And Internet Explorer was really bad. Like, I think if you remember Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer, like, never really came back. Like, Internet Explorer was always pretty bad. <laughs> like, it kind of, like, was bad and then never never improved. Like, it was always just bad. Um, I think they try, they're trying to bring it back with, like, Microsoft Edge or Internet Edge. But I think people are, like, kind of moved on. They're like, no, we use Chrome, we use Firefox. Like, we're not, we're not going to use Internet Explorer or Internet Edge. Like, it's, you lost that battle there, <laughs> Mr. Gates. Um... So I kind of I kind of like question his character a little bit because it's like you know that's sort of not the only thing I've heard about Microsoft and and sort of his leadership and yeah I mean great I mean Microsoft is, as 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 a, you know the Windows operating system is extremely popular however um, trusting Bill Gates too much seems to be something I should be wary of and. Also, there's some other things too. I think I brought brought this up previously about like relationships with China and dictators, dictatorships, and other things. And I question those things too. But but anyway, so yeah, let me let me stop rambling on and on about like why I, I don't particularly love Microsoft. Um, but yeah, anyway, sorry. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep, keep keep going on here. But um, it's Chromium. Microsoft Edge is good though. Yeah, well, now it's okay. Now it's okay. I would say, I, like, I, I think, I think Microsoft Edge is not bad. I agree. Um, I wouldn't use it again personally, like, because I, I want to try to avoid anything Microsoft. Um, and I, ha I have an alternative already. Like, I'm using Firefox. I think Firefox is okay. Um, I use DuckDuckGo for my search engine. I am trying to avoid things at Google too. It's hard for me to avoid this stuff though. Like I, I ultimately I'm like kind of, it's kind it's somewhat pointless. Uh, there's this expression tilting at windmills by Don Quixote. Don Quixote is tilting at windmills. It's like basically, excuse me, a guy goes insane and tries to like start to running into windmills with a, with a, a spear on his horse and he just starts attacking windmills. Um, that's what it's supposed to be referring to. It's just like, it's kind of a euphemism for like basically trying to take on a task that's impossible. Like you're not going to knock down a windmill charging at it with a horse. Like it's just not, that's insane. Um, so sometimes I kind of feel like a lot of the things I think about doing are a lot like that. Um, this being one of them where it's like, I'm trying to be ethical with my consumerism, but I'm also not really sure I can realistically do that. Nor, or at least realistically do that to the extreme that I'm trying to go to. If that makes sense. Um, Bill Gates be selling your information on the black market? Possibly, yeah. I don't know. I, I couldn't. I couldn't verify one way or the other. But I, I, again, if, I, if I'm already questioning his character, it's like, who knows? You know. I thought it was really creepy. I got a new machine. 
I have Windows on this machine. I got a new machine that had Windows. And I don't know what I did, but basically that new machine suddenly had the same desktop background as my machine, as my laptop. And and it's a, it's a, it's a very unique picture. Like, it's, it's my dad, right? And it's like, there's no way that, like, Microsoft could have guessed that that picture of my dad should be on my desktop. Like, it had to somehow have linked my laptop computer, they have my identity there, also, and link it with my, my this other Windows machine that I got. And I don't know exactly, I, I, like, I must have done something, like, some setting, or when I was setting things up, I must have hit, trip trip something, or did something where, like, I basically gave it the okay that, that, like, I would transfer information, but, like... I don't even remember like giving my permission to do that. Like I don't like that. That's the thing is like, I probably said it was okay at some point, but like basically it should be like abundantly clear that I've now connected myself to both of these computers, like that, that I've connected these computers to each other somehow through Microsoft, right? Like it should be like really obvious that I did that and it wasn't. And I was kind of like, this is really creepy. <laughs> like this is just like really creepy. It's like, why does this computer know about, my other computer, like, just because I'm using Windows, like, I, that, what? <laughs> Why does Windows have a profile about me? <laughs> Why am I being, like, personally identified by Windows? It's like, this is just an operating system I use. Like, this shouldn't be, this is not that personal relationship, <laughs> okay? It's a little much. But I guess that's, that's kind of the thing. Um, you know, uh, someone had suggested, like, if you're getting something for free, um... And then it doesn't mean a pro- if you're getting a product for free, it means that you are the product. If that makes sense, they're they're making money off of, you, of basically you somehow. So anyway, so yeah, I don't yeah I don't like I don't like how like how much personal information it seems or how personalized the relationship seems to be between myself and Microsoft just just by using their operating system. It's just it's very like it doesn't need to be like that, and it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Edge is good though. It's Chromium. Yeah, Chromium. The Chromium engine, I think, is pretty good. I've heard, I've heard about that. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I'd use Linux if it wasn't such a pain to deal with, and it also has less compatibilities. Yeah, yeah. Linux is a nuisance. I think I've I've, I've been using Linux for so long now that at my at my job, it's I've been there for like maybe three and a half, approaching three and a half years. Um, I think at the end, like a month or two, it'll be three and a half. And um, I use Linux all day over there and I actually gotten really comfortable with Linux since then and I tried to set up this machine originally with um, Arch Linux this this new machine um, however uh, however I think the reason I didn't do that so I wanted to play Fortnite and I learned that Fortnite is only for Windows so I was like <laughs> and it's it's as it's not a trivial thing as, as it's not a trivial thing to port um, between uh, it's not a trivial thing to port between um, Windows binaries that are uh, binaries that are binaries that are compiled, and what, what is it? It's binaries that are compiled and then linked, and the, res- and the resulting object files linked to execute on oh, the Windows operating system. Uh, gamer moment, yeah. <laughs> that's more. It's more like a hopeless romantic kind of a moment because there was someone that I really wanted to play with. And, um, actually at the time it was like kind of clear that she had moved on (laughs) in her life already. (laughs) I hadn't really like gotten it, you know, just being, I don't know, kind of, I don't know. It was a mix of like, there was a lot going on in my, my life at the moment at the time. And I also was somewhat not paying attention, somewhat not understanding the, what's going on, but we'll just say, it's not going into too much detail. We'll just say, we'll just say, yeah, it was, yeah, that was, that was the why, that was originally why. And so I was like, okay, well, then I won't put Linux on it because, right, right oh yeah, yeah, so that, that was the thing, right. So, so binaries that are compiled for Windows, excuse me, I need to be yelling the mic, binaries that are compiled for Windows are not easily ported over to binaries that are compiled for Linux, for other operating systems. Um, like it's a whole different compiler, uh, sort of. I want you might be able to compile use I don't think I don't think Windows is interested in supporting um actually I don't know I don't know about that I could be wrong you 
I'm just thinking now. Because, like, I don't know if you could use a G++ compiler, which is not Windows compiler. I know you can use it on Windows and compile for Win. I think you can. I don't know. I'm getting a little confused now. But there's, like, basically the port portability issues are, like, really complicated and not trivial. So, like, I would not expect that Fortnite would be easily compiled and, and run on Linux. Yeah, that's like a very long-winded way of saying. I don't. I don't. Not only do. Not only do I know that it's not made for Linux, but also, I think it's pro very, very unlikely that it will be run on Linux in the future. Um, and then from there, I was like, well, if that's the reason that I want to want this machine, then I should just switch to Windows. So yeah. So that. that I, in my opinion, also, I, I agree with you on like. Um, um, it's a pain and has less compatibilities. I, th I think uh, I think it's um, you could always. I think it I think it's um, gaming is such a big deal for everybody in the world. I guess not for everybody, but a lot of people. There's such a there's such a like. Imp I want to say lust because I don't want to I don't want to gratify it too much, but like I want to say because it's kind of like idolatry, but. Um, I mean, not getting too far into all that, but let's just say, let's just say, like, there's so much attention paid to video games. We'll put it that way. So much attention paid to video games that I think, because most video games are made for Windows and most people use Windows, and people, most people actually even use a computer for the video games. Like, there's this kind of positive feedback loop going on where people want to use their computer so they could play games, and most of the games are made for Windows, so they want Windows. And then other people that other games are then made for Windows because people are, have mostly have Windows, if that makes sense. So like there's this thing going on where like people want games, and the games are made for Windows, so they want Windows. And then people who make games want to sell the game, want people to play the games, and those people have Windows, so they make the game for Windows. And it's just kind of like back, ping pong back and forth. Where I think that if Linux somehow um, could grab more attention from like gamers somehow, something like that, make it like games, gamers and game developers, the gaming community, then they would probably replace Windows as like main operating system of sort of the the world. But that's that's like a I don't know, it's kind of speculative and kind of kind of way out there. But it's just something I noticed. I was like, yeah, it, it kind of makes a lot of sense to me that like people don't really care that much about their operating system. They care more about, like like you said, the, the capability. Like that, that, I, that, I'm sorry, the reason, that ties back into what we were saying, but because it's one of the capabilities that Linux really doesn't have. Like, when Linux is not very attractive to gamers, just for, for gaming. It's attractive to software developers, but not very attractive to, to gamers. Um, and it also has issues with um, graphics and whatnot. Like, that's actually another, another issue it has, is with, like, if you want to make games, because there are people that do want to make games for Linux, because a lot of a lot of developers like Linux, a lot of developers play games, so they're like they want to to sort of make Linux better for gaming. But I think there's a lot of issues there too. Some some folks I was talking to were explaining that to me that like yeah, there's like you need drivers, and some of these companies are like not really interested in, in building drivers, and there's like stuff vaguely stuff stuff I'm not super familiar with at all. Um, but yeah. Uh, so you could always download a Windows Virtual Machine and play through that. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was kind of the idea I was thinking about going with. Like, I, I kind of just haven't like sat down and, and took the time to do it. Um, where what I was going to do is actually dual boot. So I was going to have two operating systems on the machine. So I'd have Windows when I want to use it, and then Linux for like all the other time that I want to use it. Um, and then also, by the way something kind of sad, frustrating, like, I don't know what to make of it, this goal of, like, okay, I'm going to get this machine so I can play Fortnite. The reason I did that in the first place, I think, I actually don't remember why I did that uh, exactly, but I can't play Fortnite on this machine, this laptop that I'm streaming on, because it's it doesn't have the, um, the specs, I think, something like that. Like, it's not really a strong enough com computer to do that. And I, th I think what I was thinking at the time was like, oh, if I, um, if I get a tower machine, then that should be good enough to play. So something like that. I forgot. I forgot. I don't know. My logic was kind of all over the place. Like I said, my brain was like, I was in a whole mess of different. Like that was like, I want to say that was like over a year and a half ago. And like 
there were so many chaotic things going on at, at, at the time. Like I'm kind of excusing myself because like even that doesn't really make a lot of sense because it's like well, really then you would you would want to get a much better computer than the one I actually got if that was your goal. I think I forgot what it, I think I think the original idea was I wanted I just wanted a secondary machine. I forgot. I don't even remember now. I think I think the reason that my different my different motives for doing these different things was was actually kept changing um, as I went. But basically, what I learned was that the machine that I got I, was not good enough to run Fortnite, even even after installing Windows, um, because of just the specs. Like the, the machine has to be improved, which is another thing I've been thinking about doing. Um, dual booting windows linux and then if i just for the sake of like well i wanted to play this game it's a free game but like i can't play it because i don't have a good enough machine why not just buy um the components for the like a better mother motherboard or a yeah, better motherboard better like gpu better like just different different cpu just like up the specs of the machine because this machine was like really cheap it's like a 200 hundred dollar machine this was like um wasted 2500 dollars my pc oof Oof. I don't know what to say about that. I don't want to make you feel bad. Um, and I played 200, 2010 games. Yeah. <laughs> Do you mean 2010, like, games from 2010? I'm, I'm sure that's what you mean. Um, that's hysterical. Nice. I, uh, I have a few comments on, on that. A few comments. So, yeah, like, I'm not, like, that. yeah, right. I'm not sure how much money I really want to spend on the machine. And, like, if it's just to play Fortnite, it's a free game. Like, really getting the specs, like... That that is a question that I've been wondering because like like I said my this machine was like two hundred bucks this machine was like from way back when it's like really old it's like it's, a, it's just like a tower that somebody had and, and I was like oh I'll, I'll take that just have an extra machine why not um, and yeah it is a question of like do I really want to sink all that money in there and uh, right now I, I should mention like I'm in a spot financially where like it kind of doesn't matter what I spend my money on like I have basic like I don't I don't know how to put this like. I have more money than I know what to do with right now. Um, we'll just express it that way. I don't want to go into too much detail as to why. We'll just say I got really lucky, um, and just leave it at that. But uh, but yeah, like I could sink a lot of money. I could put a few thousand dollars in, into a machine if I wanted to. But like then the question is like, what's the point though? Like why? Like is it just to play Fortnite for like a few games? Like why? Why even do that? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm conflicted about that. I also need to spend the time, too. Like, that's the other thing. I've been, like, acutely aware of my time lately, where I'm, like, I don't know. I've been, like, thinking about that too much, where I'm, like, I don't, like, I'm, like, going to be 30 soon, like, in a, in, a, in a year or so. It's, like, like, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> um, totally different subject, but, 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 yeah. So, so I thought about that. Like, I could, I could take this machine, take the time, take the money, and, like, improve it, and then I could be, like, okay, I could finally play Fortnite, and I'll play it for, like, you know, two hours or something, and then I'll just never play it again. <laughs> and, and it's like, okay, now I have this really specced up machine, but like, what am I gonna do with that now? Like, I don't, just give it to somebody, donate to somebody. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Windows Virtual Machine play through that. I wasted twenty five hundred dollars on my PC. Ouch. I mean, if it was, if it was, it was, I don't know if it was worth it or not. You know, like I don't know. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too upset about that because like you never really know. Um, like it's, like it's generally not, like I would generally encourage folks to be, um, what do they call that? Uh, frugal, like fr frugal and not spend fr frivolously. However, once you've already spent the money on something, like there's no way to, it's like you can't go back in time. Right. So I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't encourage either like beating yourself up about it or like berating I wouldn't berate like, not berate I wouldn't berate somebody about anything really or shouldn't berate <laughs> shouldn't and wouldn't are not the same thing <laughs> what I would do is not necessarily what I shouldn't do <laughs> knowing knowing myself knowing me um but anyway um yeah I would say don't I would say yeah I would say don't don't beat yourself up about it don't get too down on about it if if you feel like you wasted money um I you don't necessarily know, you know, because you don't know what's going to happen in the future. Like, you don't know, like, maybe maybe something will come up and you'll be like, oh, great, I'm glad my computer works well enough to, to do, to support whatever thing I'm trying to do. Like, one of, the, one, of the, one of the applications of having, like, a pretty strong computer is if you're interested at all in, like, machine learning, then having equipment for that is, although the tricky thing about that is, like, it's not really, usually for that is, like, GPU type stuff. Actually, I'll get into that in a second. I, I want to come back to the, 
I'm like, I'm, there's so many different tangents I'm going off on. I want to just come back for a second. Um, 2010 games, yeah, 2012-ish. I feel you, I'm turning 20 this year. Wow, you're 20. Wow. Really? I think I've... No kidding. Wow, you were like 18 or so? Maybe young. You're you're really young. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know if I said you're really young, but you're, you're younger than I thought, um, I guess. Uh, wow. Wow. Um... I don't think you should feel the way that I feel, though, because uh, I'm old. <laughs> I wouldn't say you're old. Um, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say. I don't think you should feel the way that I feel, because I, you're old when you're like forty. <laughs> Actually, yeah, time goes really fast. Time goes really fast. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Young is still still thirties. Yeah, I still have like youth, youthful like energy and whatnot, um, but definitely starting to notice like I'm aging a bit. And I don't know, I don't know what to say. I'll just say like twenty is definitely like yeah, it's it's pretty young. I wasn't I wasn't expecting that. I guess it's maybe like fifty plus. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's relative, right? So like one of the reasons when I, I talk about being old or not old, the kind of like the main reason I talk about it personally is I thought to myself um, like a few things. So there's like a lot of things. So so my dad passed recently, right? Uh, a year. So remember I was saying, I was like, oh yeah, like a year and a half ago, like a lot was going on, and like it was hard for me to focus and stuff. So my dad was dying. Um, and I was kind of like watching him die, sort of, um, which was difficult. And I was trying to spend more time with him and, and whatnot. Um, and he, he, he did pass uh, April. So like actually tomorrow would be a year. So a year ago from tomorrow, he, he died. And um, the thing that struck me about that is like I st- I felt I feel like um you know I wanted to sp- I I really felt this like f- sense of like I wanted to spend time with him um and I kind of got the sense of like if I have kids later in life because he was he was he was older when he when he got married and had children he was like I want to say forty or so by the time by the time he, he met my mom and, and and had children um my thinking was like well. I really like would have liked to have spent more time with him, and so if I have children sooner, then I would be able to afford that to my kids. If that makes sense, um, I guess I don't, I don't. I guess I didn't really need to need to talk about my dad to really express that, but I don't know. Like it, it, it kind of just like really gripped me at the time. Like I was like really like, oh man, like I gotta I gotta get like get going on like starting a family because. Um, you know, time is limited. Like it's really short. Um, and other ideas of like, you know, like wanting to have kids when you're young. So, um, no, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. I, that's another thing too. It's like, I have this habit of like, or, or is it, no, I should say it's another thing. It's a, it's a thing. There's a thing, there's this thing for me, um, where I have this bad habit of like going into unnecessary details and, the reason why that's difficult for me is that I have this bad habit of like gossiping about other people and like bringing up other people into it to, to bring up a different point is like, if you don't need to do that, then don't do that. Because if you, if you gossip about them, it's like, you know, like you're going to be not only like, not only just intentionally gossiping about them, but like, even if you're just talking about them, and then you're going to be tempted to gossip, like tempted to overshare or, or what have you. Um, so like if I can avoid just like bringing other people into the conversation in turn without, I don't, I don't mean other people in the conversation, but I mean like avoid bringing up other people's business or, or I don't even know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Just um, it's something that I struggle with. I'll just say that. Uh, yeah, gossip. And so, right. So. But yeah, yeah. So, so that was the thing. So, like, I had, the, I had for, for this period of time, I was like really, really concerned about like having children, getting married soon, having children soon. Um, yeah. I, ironically, this is this is kind of this is crazy, but something that just reminded me there there was someone who, you know, 
I had expressed like, oh yeah, I'm interested in finding a wife. And she was like, oh, I would love to be someone's wife. She picked out a wedding ring that was like $30,000. And at the time I was like, I'm not really ready for that. But like I could buy, a, you know, I could, you know, make that kind of money. Um, and so it's like, there's a certain like almost bittersweet irony where like now I've actually gotten to that point where like I could actually get her that ring if she wanted it. Um, but like, I'm also like really sad because it's like she moved on, right? So like it's like, and that was my thinking at the time too. I was like, man, I wanted to work really hard um, so I can get there, but like I eventually got there, kind of, kind of randomly, not really through my own my own strength. Um, but I just that, that that's that was been a bit on my mind too lately, where I'm just like, it's a really good thing I didn't get her that ring. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> um, she would have moved on, prob- probably. I mean, I don't, like, I don't think it was an accident. I don't think it was a mistake. Like, I think it was kind of just things how they were and how they would have been and all that. Like, it's just all things considered. I think, like, I think it just wouldn't have been right. But like, I'm, I'm grateful now. It's like, well, now if someone wants a ring, I can get them. I can get them a ring, I guess. Uh, not someone, my wife, I would be. But I, th- I think I'd probably end up marrying a woman who probably wouldn't want. A ring or an expensive ring probably not wouldn't even necessarily want a ring at all i don't know i don't know anyway anyway i'm kind of rambling on now but but what i, what I wanted to I, I digressing but i wanted to focus on was like time being short um talking about youth and this desire to oh yeah wanting to have kids while i still have energy that was that was the other really big thing um wanting to have kids while i still have energy because one i would want to i would want to i would want to be there for them in their lives, like as they get older, like I'd want to be around, would literally like not want to die too soon in their lives. And then also, um, the other thing was having the energy to have kids because like, you know, that's the thing is like, you kind of, you start to slow down as you get older, like you have less and less energy. Um, and I think that would be like better too. So, so anyway, yeah, it's like very long winded, but, but, but in, to, to the point, like I, I had this period of time where I was like really like I'm trying to find a wife, I'm trying to get married, I'm trying to like trying to, you know, you'd be like an epic father by the way. Thank you. Oh, thanks. That's very sweet. Thanks. Thank you. That's very kind. Thanks. I hope so. I hope it'd be okay. I um. I I don't know. I don't know. I I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um. I don't know. I just, I'm, I'll just say, you know, I, I just pray to God. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll pray to God. I'll pray to God and pray to God and and you know, God's will be done and um, and whatever it is, it is. You know, I'm not. I don't want to. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm like, uh, <laughs> thank you for that. that that's what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, but yeah. Um there was something else. Uh oh. Downloading Windows and a virtual machine playing through that. Yeah. Right. That yeah, so of the ideas that I had, right, ultimately I was like dual booting was probably what I was gonna go with. And then and then I'm like kinda like, I don't know what I want to do with it now because it's like, well I don't really want to you know, put the time and energy and money into um getting a machine to be um to be like a lot better and then and then I was like well then I don't really I guess I won't be playing Fortnite on that machine and then like I was basically I'm not sure what to do with the machine now I, I'm sorry I'm kind of to 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 finish that subject is that I, I I I think I'll probably just end up like I'll probably just end up dual booting Windows and Linux just so I want to have Windows for um my job because I, I remote into a machine using it's like a Windows to Windows machine. I don't. I don't know. I could probably remote into the machine with a. Um, no, I don't know. The program that I use to get into the VPN is compiled for Windows, so it's it's un- unlikely that they have binaries for Linux prepared. So that's that. So that's probably the reason. Because there there might be a way to remote from a Windows machine to a, a Linux machine to a Windows machine. Like that. I don't think that necessarily would be the, a problem. I don't know. Um, however, I do think there would be an issue. 
that that could be an issue too. But I don't. I hope there definitely would be an issue if there's like proprietary third-party software that I use that's like only for Windows. Then it's like, well, I can't. You know, won't, won't be able to do that. So. Yeah. So yeah, VPN is a virtual private network. So basically, the company would run on their own kind of network, and then I'd have to like use a, a special program that sort of like a security kind of, you know, val validates my login, validates a bunch of things, and then that allows me to get into the network. And so if that program is only for Windows, then then I think that's um, that's going to be um, what's I saying? Um, that's gonna be a stumbling block. So, so yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let me let me get off that subject because I'm I'm kind of yakking on and on about about this this machine and what I wanted to do with it and, and whatnot. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just thinking about like being being 20 years old. Like uh, I'm just thinking like what what I should say or what I could add or um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I have I have this tendency to think probably too much about like the past in my life and like when I was young and, and like how, th how things should have been or how things could have been and, and, and things of that nature. And I would say like, I really don't know. Like I, I really have no idea. Um, Cause I, I tend to express a lot of um, like frustration, you know, with how things were and a lot of like resentment um, and Kind of, kind of bringing us all the way back to when we're talking about cursing. So, like, I think the reason biblically to not curse is this notion of a contentious spirit. So, um, contention is like argumentative, abrasive. Like, let's see if we can find a contention. Let me see. Um, act or instance of having or striving in controversy or debate, conflict. Striving to win competition, rivalry, assertion, put forward an argument. Yeah. So contentious is like is kind of negative, but it's like competitive, conflicting, um, aggravating. Like all these different kind of things are sort of related. Um, and in scripture, there's this notion of a contentious spirit. Um, and let me see. Can I just, yeah, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, here we go. 11.16. First Corinthians 11.16 KGB. Oh, whoops. That KGB, yes. Um, but if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches or God. Can we get the... Can we get the... Um, what's this saying? Um, there's a button I'm looking for here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's what I wanted. All right, more context. Well, not exactly what I wanted, but cl close enough. All right. Uh... Uh, oh yeah, well, just as an aside, if a woman have a long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. Um, I don't really fully understand what this means, this other part, but her hair being glory is, I don't know. Just lately I've been noticing women with short hair, and I was like, the Bible says it's a glory to have long hair. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of somewhat disappointed, but that's kind of total, totally unrelated, but, um, if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, none of the churches of God. There's other, there's other, uh, hold on. Let me see. Let me just see references to contention. There's, there's quite a few. Um, only pride, only by pride cometh contention, but with the well advised is wisdom. Beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water, therefore leave off contention before it be meddled with. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth call for strokes. The lot causeth contentions to cease, and parteth between the mighty. Okay, I'm not sure what that's referring to. I think that's probably needs more context. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. So if you offend someone, right? 
bars of a castle. Right? A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are continual dropping. Ouch. Um, cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. Looking for Whew. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Actually this is this is referring specifically to script to scripture itself. Um, basically like debates about like the Bible. Um, strivings contentions and strivings about the law uh, not really so much what I'm looking for uh... hmm Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe I need to like think about this some more. I'm sorry. I was like so confident that there is um, this notion of a contentious spirit in scripture, and actually, I'm kind of having a hard time um, having a hard time pinning it down. Now that we're talking about it, because I, I thought that it was. I thought it was. I thought it was in Corinthians. Yeah, it is. Or there's something in Corinthians. Um, hath been declared unto me, for it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are, it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. I don't know if this is just in contentions in general. This is not like the strongest case in scripture for like the notion of a contentious spirit. I mean, I mean, there's there's definitely like contention is definitely not a positive thing in general, and also not in, in scripture. But I'm struggling to struggling to kind of put it together. I guess I guess this one is pretty good. Proverbs, a couple a couple of verses in Proverbs is probably enough. Um, but actually this, this one is referring to pride. So be humble and then you won't have so much contention. Um, and, and, and I guess, I guess what you could say is if you have a contentious spirit, then humility is probably what you need more of. Um, I'm trying to relate this back to cursing, by the way, that's like the <laughs> struggling to do that, struggling to do that. Um, the beginning of strife is as, as when one let, letteth out water, therefore leave off contention before it be meddled with. I want to say, I guess this is be, I don't really fully understand what this means. I think this means like if you like start pouring water, like you stop, you want to stop immediately because if you keep pouring, you'll just have more water, right? And that's kind of like the beginning of strife. So as soon as as soon as you notice contention, you want to stop. <laughs> And like back up, <laughs> um, stop it right there, so that we don't end up with the whole, whole mess. I think that's kind of what this is referring to. Fool's lips enter in, into contention, and his mouth calls for strokes. So, foolishness also leads to contention. Um, and actually, what what a foolish person speaks, foolish lips enter into contention. Right. So like when you if you are a foolish and you speak a lot um, foolishly, I suppose. Not just speak a lot, but just speak. Being foolish when you speak, uh, I suppose, would cause contention. And his mouth calleth for strokes. I want to say strokes are like whippings or beatings or something like that. Um, I'm not sure what this is referring to. But basically, I want to say violence. I want to say this is like you're calling for violence, right? So the foolish person would 
enter into contention and then call for violence. Um, which I, I think I've noticed that in my life, right? Like people who seem violently like aggressive, you know, aggressive, aggressive and sorry if I leave without saying anything sometimes. I'll come in later if you're still alive. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I have, I have to go like ASAP, by the way. Oh, you're going. Okay. Take care, Yuki. I'll talk to you soon. No, that's okay. I appreciate that. No, no, no. Don't even worry about it. That's, I appreciate it. I know, I know this conversation we got was got kind of got kind of personal and, and I enjoyed it. And thank you for, for coming by and saying hello. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Um, everybody's got, you know, things they got to do, but yeah, you got to go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Feel free. Feel free. Um, yeah, I'm kind of, I kind of got off a little bit off subject too, where I was like, now I'm just reading the Bible now. I'm trying to like, um, what do you call that? Um, reviewing my own like thoughts about scripture so that's fine i probably should return to what i was doing also i'll come back to this though another time maybe maybe i won't do this i might not do this on stream but but another time i'll learn more about contention but that's that's why i'm trying to avoid cursing is because i think it it denotes like contention and probably something that i'm doing wrong like i should i should live without such contention if that makes sense um I don't actually know. Uh, a cur- yeah, cursing doesn't seem doesn't seem righteous to me. Just I guess I'll just put it that way. That's another way to express it. it doesn't seem like the most righteous thing. Um, but even but even um, like expressions of like frustration, uh, I kind of question. You know, if they have like curse words re- replaced. It's still kind of like. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's righteous or not. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's just something that I kind of like. I've noticed. And I try to avoid it. And like, I haven't really fully articulated like why, or like what what basis is in there is in scripture for that either. Um, but I know contention definitely is something I've been paying attention to lately. I, I, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I should learn more. I should learn more about this. Um, but anyway, okay. Let me yeah, let me return. Let me return. Um, but yeah, but yeah, it's it definitely good to see you, Yuki. I don't know if you're still here, but if you're if you're still here, it's definitely good good to see you. Um, for this problem, uh, I think we've been kind of chatting for like over an hour. This this problem, yeah, this problem should be kind of easy. This is like basically Fisher Yates. Um, I'm almost certain, and so we'll have the original be copy copy assignment uh, copy assignment assignment cop assignment operator will copy the uh, the vector. Is what I expect, and then we can run the modern version of Fisher Yates to shuffle our array. 1964, Knuth in the Art of Computer Programming, Algorithm P, shuffling the Dristin Feld's article, nor Knuth's uh, first edition. Acknowledge the work of Fisher and Yates. They may not have been aware of it. Subsequent editions of Knuth's mentioned Fisher and Yates contribution. Algorithm described by Justin Feld differs from that given by Fisher and Yates. Small but significant way, whereas a naive computer implementation of Fisher and Yates method would spend needless time counting the remaining numbers on st- in step three above. Justin Feld's solution to move the struct numbers to the end of the list by swapping them with the last unstruck number at each iteration. This reduces the algorithm's time complexity to linear compared to quadratic for the naive implementation. This change gives the following algorithm for a zero-based array. Shuffle an array of n elements into C0 to n minus 1, from i to n minus 1 down, from n minus 1 down to 1. Do j random integers such that j is between 0 and i. Exchange a of i and a of j. Equivalent version, which shuffles the array in the opposite direction from lowest index to highest, is... Shuffle an array A of n in, in elements in C0 and minus 1. Um, yeah, so really simple. Basically, um, you kind of just, you basically just like select of, of, from your set of numbers. You just select a number for the first slot. Then, then of the numbers that are left, select one of those for the next slot, and, and so on. And the result is um, all of the, all of the randomly select, all of with equal probability, all of the possible permutations that your shuffle could end up with from the original 
um, have the same probability if, if you if you do it that way. That's kind of like the the point of um, Fisher Yates. So so yeah, pretty pretty straightforward. Um, so we're gonna do for int i equals yeah we want to use random here. Informant distribution int. Um, we're going to have a random engine. Random. Oh. Device R. And we have an um, empty. This is the seed program. And the generator is set to. Messonite Twister seed engine uh, using R random device. Excuse me. And then distribution is going to be from. Now, this is kind of interesting. So I equals, we go, we go eh, front to back, it doesn't really matter. Zero, I is less than original dot. Size or yeah, ret. We'll do ret. Ret dot size. I and we're gonna say um, uniform int distribution int param type new params. These are gonna be from going to be from I. It should be i plus one to red dot size minus one, right? And then we're gonna say d dot param of new params, and then we're gonna say int x is gonna be this index. Um, which is D of gen, and then we're going to swap ret of i with ret of x. Yeah, and it doesn't really matter that much that we kind of update these parameters each time for this inter int distribution. I think I want to say there's a way that we could generate the those random numbers. From a uniform distribution over those those values, like we probably could do it a different way, but like this is fine. This, is, this works. This is okay. Um, and then we return red. Something like this is what we want. Um, oh, yeah, one nine nine three seven. See how that goes. Nice. Um, no kidding, huh? Uh, also, this doesn't need to be. I don't think it matters really, but. Oh, it does matter. Yeah, because i plus one is right. Okay, no, that matters a lot. Okay, made my mistake. Um, okay. Should we just go for it? I think so. I think we just go for it. No! <laughs> Wait, really? Wait, how is it wrong? What? No, I got it wrong! <laughs> I thought this was such an easy question, yet, yet, yet I got it wrong. How is this wrong though? What? Wait, what? What? How? <laughs> How does this even determine that it's wrong? How does that happen? 
I don't think it's wrong. I'm so confused. Wrong answer. What do you mean wrong? How? It's all wrong. <laughs> it's all wrong. Reset, shuffle, reset, shuffle, reset, shuffle. Um, what? Is it a Monte Carlo thing that they do? They check. I want to say there's some there's some way that they're checking the result to see if it follows the the distribution it's supposed to follow. I don't know how that how that's happening, but somehow it is. I guess I don't I don't know. It's super weird. It's so strange. I'm pretty sure this is correct. So you update the parameters of the distribution, get the number. It's a uniform distribution. I got maybe I'm crazy. I don't I don't know. Uh, I don't know, I don't know man. Um, oh, you know what's wrong? Oh, it is wrong. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, it's wrong. It's definitely wrong. Yeah, I'm wrong. I'm wrong about this. I'm wrong. Yeah, that's my mistake. Duh. Uh, okay, I had the right idea. The problem was... Um, there, might be more, there might be a more efficient way to do this. To get the random number. Apparently it's kind of inefficient what I'm doing somehow. I don't know. I'm okay with that. Just like keep it really simple and, and just update the params each time. But there might be a way to like reuse the same int distribution, I guess. Something along those lines. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I think what I did wrong was there is a chance that the element that's already there stays there, which is what was incorrect. That's why we got the wrong distribution. It wasn't even just the wrong distribution. It was like, I think we were kind of skipping skipping certain possibilities. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was about my mistake. Right. When I did I plus one, then it was, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't possible for the same element to stay in the same place. Um, really interesting approach, problem, question, but uh, kind of sad that I got it wrong. Really sad that I got it wrong. I'm also sad that this is slow. Why is it so slow? It doesn't need to be that slow. I guess the reason it's so slow is because of the um, updating the parameters each time. I think. He might be able to do. This is kind of silly, but I don't know, part of me is like, what if you just, you could speed this up a bit, couldn't you? You could speed this up a bit, couldn't you? Oh, it's a function. Okay. Okay. Let's put the zero have one. Huh. Wait, what?
Oh. This will just get the parameters. Oh. Never mind then. Okay. Hmm. Well, anyway. So I have the right idea. I, I think. Hmm. Okay then. How does this go? Slightly faster. I want to say there's got to be a way where I don't need to update the parameters for the, the distribution each time. You know? That's got to be... Just thinking about that, like there's got to be a way, because right, that would speed things up a lot. You could also, um, mm, you also you could take the shuffled version. You could also do this too. It speeds things up a bit as well. I don't know if this, this will actually do what we want. Excuse me. That's slower. That's actually slower. Really. Huh. That's interesting. No, you don't want to do this. No. Really? Now the question I have here is it's actually slower, huh? The overhead of having this extra array. It's not really that. Hmm. Hmm. 20 milliseconds. All right, let's go for it. Okay, it's a little bit faster. All right, I thought that would be faster. My thinking is that uh, what this will do is this original array, you're just going to return that when you want to reset. But it doesn't really matter. Um, every like every permutation that you have is has equal probability from any other permutation. So it doesn't matter if you're copying the original array and then permuting it, or if you have just like the previously shuffled array and permuting it. And The speed boost is that, you know, instead of doing an assignment copy each time, you just have a reference. And so you save a little bit of, of, of time there. Now, the other big time save you'd have is um, if you were to not have to constantly update the parameters for this distribution. I think that was something I got stuck on in the past. It's like, how do you actually randomly select these numbers? I guess using the same distribution. Um, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I guess it's fine to just keep updating the parameters. I don't know. Uh, let me see let me see what the discussions have to, to do to it faster. So I'm a little a little uncertain here. 
I guess they just used Rand. I guess it's faster. Alright, anyway, I don't know. Reset makes no sense. I don't get the point of reset. Does anyone? Nobody is going to actually shuffle your given original if reset needs to be supported. Then there's nothing to reset. Oh, here we go. Boom. Person who made the question answering him. Here we go. Increase the likelihood that when shuffle is called, it is shuffling based on the original array, not the previously shuffled array. Increase the chance of detecting bugs in the main algorithm in shuffle. Interesting. I don't really get it either. Uh, I don't know. I know, he, I know he described it, but I just didn't really understand it. Um, I'm looking for fast submissions. Standard shuffle. Tips. Oh. In the algorithm library, you have a standard shuffle. No kidding, really? I didn't realize that. I don't even know. This is trivially easy because you have a shuffle out, you have a. <laughs> Random shuffle, shuffle. Um, shuffle and random shuffle. Uh, what's this? Um, removed. Random funk. U R B G. What is that? Random number generator is the function object G. Oh. Um. Huh. Oh. Could just use the Messina twister. Doesn't really matter. I guess. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Let's do that. Um, neat. The gen. Yep. That's it. Oh. Okay. 
Alright. It's a little bit faster. It's probably about as, about as good as it's going to get, I think. Um, really don't know if I could do better than that. This is pretty good then, actually, what I had. It's pretty close. Um, yeah, Fisher Yates. And one more thing is yeah, the discussion. Python hack. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, what was this one? Yeah. I think this one was interesting. We, we've been on this question for a while. I think, uh, I think I should. Um, I think we should, uh, Ooh, excuse me. probably move on to the next question soon. I spent kind of a lot of time on this for something being relatively, um, simple. So it looks like this fellow actually generates a new in distribution each time which I, I just updated the parameters each time I did it the same way basically the same way I did it um, default random engine Okay, I guess you use a default random engine. Maybe I should do th use, use that in the future. Instead of using a random device in the Mesonate Twister, what's the default random engine? Man, I feel like I struggle with things that are like really simple sometimes. Um, so I think about it, it's like, it's actually like, this really is not that complicated using the, the random number generator. Um, Implementation defined. Well, what? <laughs> Predefined generators. Should probably use this one instead of using. Um, the default. Random device with the MSNA twister. That's probably better than using a default random engine. I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay. Hmm. Oh, okay, you can call the function with the parameter types. That's probably better. Yeah, that's kind of what I did. Maybe that's, that's what I want to do. Um, it's probably using the same algorithm anyway. Pretty interesting, overall, pretty interesting. Um, Param T. Oh yeah, so type type def. Okay. Diff T. Wait, what? 
difference type. Oh, that's interesting. Distro T. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. So the distribution type D and then the difference type is going to be the difference between these two iterators. Um, last most first and then you said I to be that where that difference type is from the back and then you're going to swap first of I which are the iterators themselves, which are, I guess that's how you access these. And then D, you can use param T. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think this needs to be type deft in order for this to work properly. Yeah, okay, that's what I was thinking. That's very interesting. Um, yeah, so that would be what? Uh, can you type def within a, um, Within a uh, just call it for empty. Type def within within the function call. I think you can. Yeah, okay, let's try that. Oh, okay. That is not faster. <laughs> it's definitely slow. <laughs> it's definitely not faster. But um, it works. It's pretty interesting. I think this is slower than the the other um, approach because of the iterators. So we can do a little bit better than this. Did they do that? What? Hold on, what? Just think it again here. Could use iterators, iterators instead of um, ar uh, array accesses because array accesses are more expensive than using iterators. Some something like that. Yeah, I guess they do have an N here. Okay. But they use this first and last or random iterators. Interesting. Okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. Um, uh, 
<laughs> okay. Can I do this? Does this make sense? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be trying to do this. Interesting. I do this? I have no idea what's going to happen here. Compiler. Unknown type name. Oh, that works. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Prem type T, prem T, ret to shuffled. Don't really need to that, do that anymore, do we? Shuffle begin. That is ret size 10 minus or minus 1. At this point, I'm just kind of tinkering with uh, the compiler. Hmm. <laughs> Don't mind me. Does work like that, huh? Well, that's a lot faster. <laughs> and somehow that is a lot faster. Imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> Who just sunk it?
Hmm. Is it that much faster? Probably not. I mean, these are probably kind of random, these, these running times. I don't think it actually matters. I guess it does. I don't know. Um, huh. Wow. Yeah, I guess it would be like this. I mean, you could do it this way too. Didn't realize you could do that with, um, you could actually use array accesses, accesses with a, um, a random iterator, a pointer, yeah, a random iterator. And then that also could be an L value for swap. That's pretty cool. Very interesting. Excuse me. Okay. Let me uh, let me go. Let me go. Uh, thank you all for watching. I will talk to you soon. Have a good rest of your day. Yeah, this is like a very kind of a very easy question, I guess. There's a lot of different ways to solve it and look at or look at it. Um, I shouldn't say that. Uh, there's kind of only really one way to solve it, but there's like a few different things, subtle things in between that are kind of interesting. Um, with regard to like random number generation and uniform distribution and I guess just randomness in general. There's also the algorithm library has a shuffle built in, which is basically this Fisher, the Fisher Yates algorithm is really straightforward, um, which is great. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I mean, there's not much more to say about this. I shouldn't say there's like a lot of, there's just, there's just details, I guess, minor details, a lot of minor details involved, um, stuff about iterators and, this was interesting. I'm, I'm glad that we kind of looked at this and learned more about it. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. I will talk to you soon. Have a good rest of your day. I think I'm going to take a small break after this for a few minutes. Wow, I was at this almost two hours. No kidding. Whoa. I, I did kind of a lot of um, talking about other things that were sort of unrelated as well. Just things that were on my mind. Um, but yeah, so I'll be... I'll be off. Uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah, let me go. Talk to you soon. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching. And I will be back. Be back shortly. I'm gonna take a small, small break after this. Come back. So, yeah. Take care. Talk to you soon.